A man who is always preoccupied with work returns home early from a business trip one Christmas and is shocked to find a certain Welsh family in his house instead of his wife and children. Before we continue, please take some time to subscribe to Daily Dose, like and share this video with your friends. It might brighten their day and inspire them to do good. Also keep watching because an important lesson awaits at the end of the video. Ted was a busy man. His clients, meetings, and business deals were always prioritized over his family. So several Thanksgivings, Christmases, and New Year would pass, and Ted would always be away on business. I'm doing all this for us, honey, he'd often tell his wife, Marissa, who had gotten used to not having her husband home. I know, but the kids miss you, Ted, she'd reply. I'll send them presents, he'd say. I love you all. See you soon. Ted was planning on surprising his family with a new house that year, which made him even busier than usual. He was supposed to be on a business trip that Christmas, but he returned home early to surprise his family, only to find that they had moved out. It was a wintry day. Ted parked his car in the driveway and was confused when he saw an unknown vehicle in the garage. He saw the Christmas decorations outside the house and smiled. Maybe we have guests over, he thought. Ted unloaded the gifts he had bought for Marissa and their kids and walked up to the front door. He would surprise them by entering through the back door, but he remembered Marissa telling him it was stuck and she would get it fixed later. Ted didn't have a spare key, so he rang the doorbell. Marissa, hun, it's me, Ted, he called out. There were no replies, so he rang the bell again. What's up with her? Why isn't she opening the door? He wondered. Ted pressed the bell three more times and was about to call Marissa when he heard hurried footsteps approaching the door. Soon after, a tall man with tattoos on his left arm came out and asked in a heavy voice, Yes, who are you? Is this some kind of joke? Who are you? Ted smirked as he shoved the man aside and marched inside. Marissa? Kids? Daddy's home. I got you all gifts. Ted stopped in his tracks as he entered the living room. There was a woman, who was not his wife, and three unknown children decorating the entire house, as well as a massive Christmas tree beside the fireplace. What's going on? This is M.I. Howe's. Did you all break in? Where are my wife and children? Ted asked angrily. Hey, hey man. The man with tattoos said. I rented this house like two weeks ago. This house was empty when we moved in. I'm Darren Welch. Were you like... The previous tenant. What? Ted said. Moved in? But Marissa didn't tell me. How is that even possible? I'm not leaving this place until I've confirmed it. I need to talk to my wife. Ted called Marissa, but the call didn't go through the first few times. He dialed her again, and she didn't pick up. What's wrong with her? What the hell is going on? He wondered. Ted then called his mother-in-law, Pamela, and was taken aback by what she said. You cheated on my daughter, Ted. How do you expect her to answer your call? She is here, and so are my grandchildren. Don't worry, we'll have a wonderful Christmas. You've never been there for them anyway. Ted was taken aback. He hadn't been able to talk to Marissa in a few weeks due to his busy schedule. He had no idea she had filed for divorce or that the papers were waiting for him at his lawyer's office until Pamela told him. Ted drove to his lawyer's office and was shocked to learn the reason for the divorce. Marissa came to see me a few weeks back, Ted, and she said she was in a hurry. She told me to pass this letter to you, said the lawyer, handing Ted an envelope. She said you were a great father despite everything, and you can still see the kids after the separation. She doesn't want the kids to grow up without their father. In shock and confusion, Ted opened the letter and began reading, Ted, I don't know when we grew so distant that I'm hearing about your affair from your co-workers. I went to their house for a party and I'm not sure what you saw in your secretary, but I won't force myself or our children on you. I guess she's young and beautiful and has all the time in the world to travel with you. Is this the reason you cheated on me with her? She had the audacity to send me your texts and tell me how much she loves you. She did that in front of our children by coming to our house. Maybe that's why you were gone and didn't want to come to see us. You had found new love, hadn't you? I don't want to tell you anything until you read this letter because what will it change? 
You are a liar and cheater, Ted. Sam and Lily will miss their father, but I won't. Goodbye, Ted. Live a hellish life with that secretary of yours. Ted buried his face in his palms. This is all wrong. I need to visit my family. Ted drove to Pamela's house and stormed inside as she answered the door. Ted, what the hell are you? Before Marissa would finish, Ted fell to his knees and began crying. How could you possibly think I'm cheating on you, babe? Do you have any idea why I've been so busy recently? Ted, get out. Right now, she said. The kids are watching their father beg their mother, and I don't think it's a happy scene. Marissa, Ted said. I am not cheating on you. I've never cheated on you. I don't know what text you're talking about, but you can check my phone. I genuinely love you and our kids. Enough, man. Marissa's dad intervened. We'll have that talk in court. Out of my house now. Ted begged and pleaded before finally revealing his big surprise for his family. He told Marissa about the house he wanted to give her for Christmas and showed her the designs on his laptop, explaining why he was busier than usual and didn't have time for them. He had been working on the plan for three years. Building that house was an expensive affair, and he had hired the best contractors for it. Fine, but how do you explain this? Marissa then showed him the texts she had received from his secretary, and something didn't add up. It turned out Ted's secretary was attracted to him, and she faked those messages to create a misunderstanding between Ted and Marissa. She knew that Ted was not always in contact with his family, and she took that advantage to separate them. I'm so sorry, hun, Marissa said. I shouldn't have doubted you. What a mess. It's okay, babe, Ted said hugging her. I love you, and I love our children. I love you too, babe, she said. Thankfully, the misunderstanding was quickly resolved, and the family enjoyed a peaceful Christmas dinner. Ted decided to prioritize his family over his work because you can earn all the money in the world again if you lose it, but not a family.